Hi there, my name's Zach Braddy. I'm a fullstack.net developer by trade, but I'm super jazzed about the front end. And I particularly like talking about Facebook's JavaScript framework, React. Now I'm lucky enough to be able to skip through the office door every day and sit down to another pleasant day of working with React. And that's why I'm here on Manning's live video platform in order to hopefully impart upon to you some of the experiences and knowledge that I have around React. In this course, React in Motion. To start the course, we're going to have a look at React at a fairly high level so that as you go through the journey of the course, you've got an idea of where we're going, the path that we're taking. From there, we're going to get you tooled up, all ready to go to start working with React. And to do that, we're going to use Create React App so we can get off the ground nice and quickly. Once we've got our tools all set up, we're gonna start taking a look at the nuts and bolts of React and see how everything works. And we're also going to start loading your brain with a few patterns and practices that you can use as you're developing your React applications. And that's just the first half of the course. And in the second half of the course, I'm gonna take all that knowledge that you picked up in the first half, and I'm gonna help you bed that in really well by building with you a React application that speaks to a web API live on the internet. And then just before we go, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through some of the technologies that you might like to investigate in order to be able to improve that application that we've built. And that should give you a few nice jumping off points in order to be able to increase the real world knowledge that I hope you pick up in React in Motion. Are you excited about all this? Because I gotta tell you, I am. So I mentioned that throughout the course, we'd be building up a little React app. And from that, you're going to have a nice little code base that you can take away at the end of the course and use that as a reference when you start going solo on your React journey. I'd encourage you to follow along with the coding videos within the course and see if you can build up the application as you go. However, if you're not the sort who likes to follow along with coding practices or if you just get stuck, that's absolutely fine. I've set up a GitHub repo of the application that we'll be building throughout the course and you'll find that there is a branch for each of the appropriate modules that we do coding in. So if you find that you get stuck throughout a module, then just go ahead Go over to the GitHub repo and pull down the branch for that module and you'll find the completed code and you can use that to compare against your own code and try and troubleshoot your way through the exercise if you happen to get stuck or if you just like to see the code working rather than having to type it out yourself. If you're just looking at the preview and you haven't decided whether you're gonna pick up React in Motion yet or not, you might be asking yourself the question, do I have the prerequisite knowledge in order to be able to benefit from React in Motion? And will I get the benefits that I'm seeking out of React in Motion? Well, allow me to try and answer those questions. First of all, the prerequisite knowledge that you need in order to be able to follow along. You're gonna to need to know JavaScript and you're even gonna to need to know the ES6 standard in order to be able to follow along. You're also gonna need a good handle on HTML and CSS, and a little bit of knowledge around REST APIs couldn't hurt either. And if you've played with any other JavaScript frameworks, that's only gonna help. But the last two are optional. Tell you what, I'll let you off on those ones. If you haven't played with them before, I am going to walk through those at a fairly basic level. So you should be able to follow along fairly easily. As to whether this course is for you, I'd imagine that the people who are going to find this course the most useful are people who are wanting to take React and use it to solve a real world problem. Now, whether that's you want to build a front end for your side hustle or whether your local pointy haired boss has read the word React in a trade magazine and has decided that now the whole front end has to be overhauled in a month. In either of those scenarios, I'm hoping that you'll be able to take this course and I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle it with my own real world experience. And in that way, I'm hoping that you will be able to have multiple jumping off points so that even if the course doesn't answer the exact problem that you have right now, then you will have enough knowledge in order to be able to go out and find the answers that you're looking for. So I mentioned that there were a heap of patterns and best practices available for use when you wanted to build robust React applications. And these haven't been the sole responsibility of the community. In fact, Facebook have played a really active role in the maintenance and development of React. And especially in the last couple of years, they have really invested in 
increasing the quality of the tooling within the React ecosystem. And just this investment, I feel like makes React a far more viable option for building applications that may stand the test of time as much as technology these days does. So what is React and what can it do for us? Well, let's boil this down to its core. React is essentially a view library that you can use in order to be able to provide reactive JavaScript experiences on the web. <laughs> that's, that's the definition that you'll see floating around the internet. And I've got to say, it wasn't entirely clear the first time I read it. So just let me boil that down a little bit more. Essentially what a reactive JavaScript experience on the web is, is I click a button and something happens. I, I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than that because uh, you could essentially react to any number of user events in your React application, but it's, it's basically I do a thing and a thing happens. But if you are like me and you want to continue impressing your colleagues with your vasty front-end vocabulary, then you can keep using the term reactive JavaScript experiences on the web. Now, how React provides those reactive experiences is actually quite interesting. And it's part of the reason why React is sometimes described as being really fast. It uses an implementation of a virtual DOM and it uses that in order to make sure that the changes that it makes to the browser DOM are done in an efficient and effective manner. And so the perceived speediness that can really be explained not necessarily because of the sleekness of the React code base, although it is pretty sleek, but more just the fact that it's so dang efficient at changing things on the browser DOM, which is the hideously inefficient part of providing a reactive JavaScript experience. Now, I wouldn't be so cruel as to try and teach you the inner workings of the virtual DOM in your very first lesson. However, I think it's important for you to have a high level understanding of how the virtual DOM is used within React because it's part of the secret source for how React provides those reactive JavaScript experiences on the web. So let's take a look, shall we? When a web page is very first served up with your React application on it, React will generate the views that are needed to be put into the DOM. However, it doesn't go straight into the browser DOM. First, it goes into the virtual DOM. And the virtual DOM is then compared against the browser DOM and any differences are then put into the browser DOM. However, those differences are able to be collated in such a way that as few repaints as possible of the browser DOM are done in order to be able to complete that change. Now, that's not gonna buy you all that much efficiency on the very first load of your application. However, as user events come in and different parts of the DOM need to be updated, you might find that you can achieve the same change with far fewer refreshes if you just take all the refreshes at once. And that's kind of what the virtual DOM does, is it does all the changes in the virtual DOM first and then does a comparison against the browser DOM so that we can be the most efficient with our repaints. It's also worth mentioning that as of recording this video, Facebook are actually working on a newer implementation and they're calling that Fiber. And it's going to be super fast and streamlined and have a whole heap of extra features like hooks into the diffing algorithm, as well as the ability to be able to set priorities on your components so that one would get uh, refreshed before another. But it's worth mentioning that with the virtual DOM implementations, the Fiber and all these inner workings of the black box of React. These are not things that you will concern yourself day to day when you're developing with React. It's worth having in the back of your mind, but don't worry too much if you don't fully grasp the concept right now. And components, React's got components. And that's another reason why we love React and why it's so popular right now. It's because React allows us to make things small and we, we love that as developers. We love to be able to make things small and encapsulated and reusable and, and ultimately maintainable. And that's exactly what React components allow you to do. It allows you to break down your UI into many different little components that you can then 
take, you can reuse them, you can ultimately recompose UIs based off all the little parts that you've built in React. And because they're all little, they're nice, they're maintainable, they're readable, and the bigger components that are made of multiple components then become really declarative in nature because instead of saying in the imperative fashion, oh, I need you know a div and a, and a, a paragraph and, and on and on it goes, instead we just say I want an article and it spits out all the different divs and, and paragraphs that you need in order to be able to display that part. And so those bigger components then also become smaller because of the declarative nature of the syntax that we use in React. Wow, there was a lot in that first video. I'm sorry if I've caused your brain to melt down. We covered uh, what you need in order to be able to be successful at following along with the course. We had a look at what React was, who wrote it, how it achieves what it does, and some of the things that we really like about it, those things being the ability to provide reactive JavaScript experiences on the web, as well as having componentized UIs that allow you to be able to compose and recompose UIs at will. There's so much more to learn though, and I'm really excited to share all this extra React knowledge with you. And the only way we're gonna be able to do that is to go through to the next module. So let's go.